And Amazon back in the news this week. If you need to pick up some supplies but can't be bothered to walk across the parking lot, well, Amazon has you covered. In Seattle, anyway, the company opened a grocery store that doesn't require you to leave your vehicle, promising customers will only have to drive in and then drive out. The service, dubbed Amazon Fresh Pickup, is now live at two locations in the Soto and Ballard neighborhoods. It's free for Prime members, and there's no minimum order amount. Customers simply place their order online, drive to the store, and wait. Once the order is ready, an employee wheels it out to the car, puts it in the trunk, and that's it, you're ready to go. The stores carry everything you'd expect to find at your local supermarket, albeit at a significantly higher price. Expect to pay a dollar per lemon, six sixty for a gallon of milk, and a buck twenty-nine per apple, or you can just do your own shopping like you always have and save some cash. I do expect Amazon will find a market for the service though. I'll keep you posted when I hear more. Facebook appears to be developing an app that may appease parents who have prohibited their children from using the platform. A code has been spotted for an unreleased messaging app geared at young teens called Talk, which allows parents to monitor who their child is in contact with. Although the idea of parental controls may deter some teens from using the app, Facebook sees it as an opportunity to grab those who are not permitted to use social media and who have not yet found their way to Snapchat. The code was first spotted by Corey Weinberg with the information, Talk is a messaging app where you fully control the contacts. Another portion stated, your child uses the Talk app to chat with you in Messenger. It also said to be aimed at children 13 years old and older, and they wouldn't need their own Facebook profile to access the app. Although talk would be separate from Facebook's messaging app, the code has suggested that the two will be connected in some way, which may be how parents will monitor what their teen is doing. The idea of Facebook releasing an app with parental controls is sure to keep many teens away, but for those who are not allowed to use social media, well, this may be the outlet that they've been waiting for. And another medical story that could bring salvation to many, or again, kick off the zombie apocalypse. Italian neurosurgeon Sergio Canavero will undertake the first human head transplant later this year in China. And following that effort, he will revive a cryogenically frozen brain and transplant that into a donor body within the next three years. The plan's completely disconnected from reality, and the state of modern medicine are at least in line with his previous outlandish goals and dubious animal research. Canavero made headlines in the past few years by claiming that transplanting the whole head of a human onto a donor body is currently possible. As proof that the transplant could work, Canavero published a gruesome experiment that he performed back in 2016, said to have repaired the severely injured spinal cords of mice, rats, and a dog. The experiments came complete with cringe-worthy video of recovering animals, yet the study lacked controls, detailed methods, and data on the injuries and recoveries. Canavero claimed to perform a head transplant on a monkey, but did not publish the experiment. Experts decidedly consider his research on spinal cord repair, let alone whole head transplants, unconvincing. A medical ethicist dubbed Canavero out of his mind for sweeping past the currently insurmountable challenges of such a feat. Canavero is carrying on undeterred, it seems. We will let you know more later this year after more news is released. And finally, in this week's What The, a young Tasmanian man was reunited with two police officers who got him home safely and then left him an unforgettable selfie on his phone. Reese Park wrote in his Facebook post along with the now ubiquitous image, so was just going through my phone and turns out these good four-letter words starting with a C took some banger selfies after they took my drunk butt home last night. 
bloody legends. In addition to spreading across Facebook, where Tasmania police would later repost the image, the picture of Constables Natalie Siggins and Jeremy Blythe smiling away as part gives up in the background also found its way onto Reddit, gaining further notoriety on the Australian subreddit. We got called to a taxi. Sam was a little bit unresponsive, didn't know where he lived, Blythe told hosts of an Australian morning show. He wasn't saying much, so we tried to locate where he was. We were lucky enough to figure out his address, noting Park's degree of intoxication. Siggins and Blythe not only helped him into bed, but waited around until a friend came home to make sure he was in good hands. That was when they decided to document the incident. Because he was a bit worse for wear, our officers took the opportunity to record the moment with a selfie in the likely event that uh, he could not remember how he got home, Senior Sergeant Craig Fox said in a statement. While discussing the relative frequency with which Tasmania police officers have to deal with people who pass out in taxis, one of the hosts commented that it must be annoying. Siggins responded, no, of course not. It's all part of the service, making sure everyone gets home safely. For his part, Park didn't seem ready to seriously consider whether the incident has made him rethink going out and getting drunk, replying to the question with a simple, dunno. Thank you for watching your weekly tech update. If you have a story you think I should feature on the program, shoot me an email, djraymcneil at gmail.com. Till next time, I'm Ray McNeil. Good night, world. Your weekly tech update brought to you by Holiday Home Care, Phillip Island, Victoria, Australia. It's your turn to relax. Before you get on holiday on the island, contact Holiday Home Care. We can set up your residence or holiday rental, do the shopping for you, provide linen and towels, and make sure it's all ready by the time you get here, giving you more time to enjoy what Phillip Island has to offer. For more information, visit HolidayHomeCarePI.com or email HolidayHomeCarePI at gmail.com. Thank you.